Ladies and gentlemen, Asylum Mike, welcome back to another Fix Your Form rendition where I take your guys' form and I coach you up as best as I can. Feel free. If you want to get involved, we need three reps at 70%. Email to askmikke at gmail.com. We got some sumo deadlifts here in Virginia Tech. Shout out to Virginia Tech. Overall, my man, looks really, really solid. What I'd like to see is if you can get those shins a little bit more vertical. Your body weight slightly behind the barbell, almost like you're falling back uh, because your starting position is pretty decent, but what you can see is right there by the knees, the bar gets too far away from you. We want to keep that barbell on our skin as much as we can. It's going to uh, keep our weight falling back. Also, proper bar path as well as as close to the bar uh, we keep it to our body, the lighter and more efficient we're going to be. My man with some conventionals, uh, we got a couple issues to start with. Uh, you can see those hips shoot up a little bit and the knees lock out before the hips. What we want to do with the conventional and typically the sumo but not always is we want to have our knees and our hips lock out at the same time. So what we need to do is try to get some tension. We got to get those arms a little bit straighter, not only to save that bicep, uh, but also we want to get that chest up a little bit more and body weight again behind the barbell. What that's going to allow us to do is, yes, we're going to bend our knees and use our quads to get the weight off the ground, but we need that tension in our hamstrings and glutes before we pull. And pushing back, almost falling back, if you have a straight line here and you think about it, falling back or pushing your hips towards the wall behind you uh, will get that tension and that'll allow us uh, to properly lock out the hips and knees at the same time if there's tension in our hamstrings. If there's not tension in our hamstrings and we just push with our quads, our hips will shoot up, body weight will go in front of the bar and we'll have an instance like that. Also with your lockout, I need you to stand tall and straight, flexing your quads and glutes, not lean back, uh, get to work. We got more conventional pulls. Overall, pretty dang solid, my man. Uh, you have a good job of locking that low back in uh, before you pull the, the starting position. It seems like it's off a little bit, um, but then you lock it in right at the last second. I'd like to see is maybe have your head up just a hair. Uh, I'd also like you to see flex those lats a little bit more. Uh, and it's hard sensation to flex your lats. You know, you talk to a, an eight-year-old kid and you say flex your bicep. That kid could probably flex his bicep, but you talk to most adults and they can't flex their lats. So two different things. We're going to really pull that bar into us as hard as we can, covering our armpit with our shoulder. And three, I'm going to torque that thing, especially with the conventional, and get our elbows pointed behind us, almost like a bench press. Moving on to squats, we're getting a whole powerlifting rendition in. Uh, overall, this looks like a pretty dang good squat, if I do say so myself. You get a little bit of collapse of that knee. Um, what I'd like to see, perhaps two different things, is toes a hair straighter. What I'd experiment with first is moving your heels outward. Not your toes actually straighter, but straightening those toes uh, by moving your heels outward, continuing to push those knees forward, uh, and overall pretty solid. You're, you're pretty long femured um, from your knee to your hip is pretty long, so we're going to have to find ways to kind of work around that. Overall, you're doing pretty dang decent with it. You'd see those hips shoot up a little bit, uh, and you get a little bit forward coming out of the hole, so some pause squats, or even just breathing and bracing a little bit harder with your lats and stomach, and then driving your traps into the bar out of the hole will allow you to maintain that same position. Once we find a position or a torso lean, we want it to stay the same, kind of like this gentleman, throughout the whole thing, uh, the entire rep. And often out of the hole, if you get some stretch reflex or you lose tightness, those hips will move and you'll get shifted forward. That is not optimal. Uh, overall right now, even though we wanted sets of three, my man's getting his hypertrophy on, trying to win that trophy, getting the quads built. Uh, form is really solid, especially at the end there, it looks a little bit better. What I'd like to see, and I've spoken about this many a time, I did a video just on touch and go deadlifts, but it, it transfers into, you know, even though there's no such thing as a touch and go squat, but kind of, and no such thing, or there is such thing as a touch and go bench. I'd like, even if you're doing a set of eight, to think about it being eight individual reps. Uh, in, in other words, just don't rush. Be quick, but don't rush. Be quick, but don't hurry. You're rushing a little bit here. So I'd like you to see you be a little bit more composed between each rep, making sure you're flexed and tight, and making each rep really count uh, as though you're doing a maximal single. And that's whether you're a powerlifter or not. Um, being explosive, being powerful in each rep has shown to help build hypertrophy by flexing the muscles harder, uh, recruiting more muscle fibers, regardless of the weight. Uh, that's kind of been a theory uh, CAT, compensatory acceleration training for a long time in strength, uh, but more recently in science has proved to also help hypertrophy. So there's kind of no reason why we shouldn't lift explosive as long as we're using the correct form. And best way to do that, 
focusing in on the individual rep, focusing in on being perfect. My man right here, hitting some sumos. Overall, looks really, really solid. Um, now, each coach may have a little slightly different opinion on this. Um, depending on how wide you are and where the knurling is on the bar, uh, I personally would rather see a lifter, and it works for me, not all, um, that if you have decent grip strength, to have a perfect line from your shoulders to the bar. Um, two, one, make the range of motion a little bit better, uh, and then often uh, allow for less rub on the chub. Uh, if you get less rub from your hands to your thighs on the sumo. Uh, so right now you're a little bit wide and the, the path that your hands have to go over your thighs is great and there's some separation there. We want that bar on your skin. So I would move that grip in just a hair, even if one or two fingers is on the smooth, as long as you can hold on to it. It looks like you're hooking. I mean, you might even be double overhanding. You son of a bee. You tough son of a bee. So I'd either try double under, uh, or excuse me, mix grip, one under, uh, or a hook grip. It looks like it's slipping a bit. Um, and moving your grip in about an inch or two. This is gonna allow, again, shorter range of motion uh, and also allow less rub. Oh, maybe you are hooking because it looks like you're in pain. My apologies for your pain. RIP to the thumbs. Uh, but overall, your form is pretty dang good. You get in a really good solid position on that starting. You can get that back really flat. Shin's fairly vertical and you're flexing your quads really, really well. Um, as much as you can, move that grip in while still doing everything else perfect. And then as much as you can, flex those lats. And that's gonna be the tip to everybody. I say it in every single video, whether you think you're doing it good, whether you are doing it good, or you're doing it poorly, you can never focus too much on flexing your midline, stomach, sides, and low back into that belt, flexing hard, and flexing your lats. You can just never over flex them in the squat or deadlift. That's one of the main cues I try to teach myself where I think my technique is pretty solid. Uh, obviously, there's always things I'm trying to improve on. Nothing's ever perfect. But the one cue I'm always telling myself when I'm getting underneath the barbell to squat or I'm setting up on the deadlift is flex my lats and flex my stomach as hard as humanly possible um, to help that midline rigidity, the transfer power, as well as staying safe, keeping that spine safe. Overall, looks pretty good right here. You get a little shift in those knees. One thing I like to see is a little bit, uh, maybe better contact with the ground. Some people talk about torque. Some people talk about three points of contact with your foot, whatever it might be for you, but have some real good contact with the ground. And what you want to do is cause some tension in those hips so you're forcing your knees out. You can see your knees moving in and out. Another thing we do is just move that stance in. Uh, it might be your arms getting in the way of your knees, but you can see at that starting position to about six inches, those knees are wobbling around. And if anything is wobbling around, if anything is not as stable as it could be, we're not gonna be as strong as we can be. Uh, stability uh, is a big piece of uh, strength, right? If a bridge is super wobbly, obviously there's some give to it because it is moving with the natural course of whatever ocean is carrying or the earth or whatever cars are driving on it, there has to be maybe a hair bit of a give. But if something is too wobbly, it's not gonna be as strong. Another, uh, Great example of from the side, what we want to do is always push our weight backwards, getting our body weight behind the bar. If you look back about four videos, I have a video talking about uh, deadlifting like a pro uh, and getting your body weight behind the bar. So we're not squatting it up, uh, we're actually just pulling it up and keeping our hips back. We're moving on to some sumo here. Kind of looks like a little stiff leg of a sumo. Overall, really solid. I wouldn't say there's anything wrong with this pull per se, but I think we can optimize it. Um, you can see your knees are just a, a bit in from your legs, from your ankles and your foot. What I'd like to see is that knee over your midfoot. If the knee is over your midfoot, you'll be able to flex that quad a little bit better. So move that stance in about an inch per side, really force those knees out, get into position, and then flex your quad, my friend. We're moving through this one. We're, we're hitting about coaching half the world in one episode. All right, my man, what we need you to do is slow down, uh, both the way up and the way down. I always like to see control on the way down to start. Uh, and I think that's causing part of the bad habit of right there having zero tension and then just cranking on the bar and that entire load is going into your lumbar, your low back. What we need to do, like everybody else, again, talking back to the video about deadlifting like a pro where I give more of an example of myself, I explain it maybe a hair better. What we want to do is right there, you're initiating the pull with your knees. What we want to do is hip hinge. The difference between a squat and a deadlift is the hip hinge itself. And the hip hinge is difficult to explain, it's difficult to feel, it's difficult to learn. But we want to have the majority of the tension into our hamstrings. So right now, all your tension is in your lumbar, your low back, and in your quads. So what we need is hips a little bit higher, chin down a bit, and then get your body weight behind the barbell. Slow yourself down, lower the load for now, 
to then learn the proper patterns that in the future you can not only lift more weight, but you can lift more weight efficiently, handling more volume over time, build, which will build more muscle and strength in the long run. We need to get that weight out of your low back, my friend. Uh-oh, are we finishing with a, a, a keeper? Really, really solid deadlift right there. Really, really solid deadlift. You can see my man has full tension. The back is super flat. Most of his body weight is behind the barbell. Tension is in his hamstrings, you can tell, because everything is moving at one piece. The knees, the hips, everything's locking out and moving perfectly. That's a hip hinge, opposed to the lift before is more of a squat. Appreciate you guys. Smash the thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Dropping four videos a week. Salam Mike. I'm out of here.